It's difficult in this day and age to do anything without the aid of computers. What started out as an expensive luxury tool has transformed into something affordable and small enough to fit in your pocket, in your car, or even in your refrigerator. But if you ask any regular person, they probably couldn't tell you the first thing about how a computer works. To first know how a computer works, you first need to know how a transistor works. A transistor is a small semiconductive switch that acts as a gate. Transistors can either be turned off or turned on. When they're turned off, no electricity will flow through them. But when they're turned on, like the naughty semiconductors they are, electricity will flow through. This means if you hit a transistor gate with an electrical signal, you could measure whether or not the electricity continued to flow or stopped. In other words, you could see if the transistor was on or off. Suppose you labeled an off transistor as zero and an on transistor as one. If you had very large amounts of incoming electrical signals, you could theoretically use them to perform math to calculate anything imaginable. This is the basis of how computers use the binary number system and count using just zeros and ones. Occasionally, computers will also count to two, but this only happens when the computer is in sleep mode and is having a robot nightmare. The most important piece of any computer is the calculator punching unit, or the CPU. The CPU has millions, billions, or potentially zillions of transistors in it, and uses all of them to perform very complex mathematics very quickly. The CPU receives input signals from whatever you decide to do on the computer, such as clicking a mouse, typing on a keyboard, or liking your cousin's swimsuit photos on Twitter even though you know God will punish you for that when you finally die. From there, the CPU takes your input signals, runs them through its wide array of transistors, and forms complex sentences. Those sentences could be something like, Hey, show this video on the screen! Or, Why the fuck hasn't Steam opened yet? I was told to open it like four minutes ago! Hurry up and divert 100% priority on the opening this fucking thing! These sentences then need to be packaged in a way that the rest of the computer parts can understand. Most other components to a modern computer are too dumb to understand the English language, and far too dumb to understand the robot language of the words beep and boop set at different octaves. To get around this, high-end processors are also installed with a plain language chip, which converts the overly flowery language of the lightning-fast CPU into phrases the rest of the hardware can work with. For example, a plain language chip may translate, hey, turn the case fans up by about 20%, into, oi, fuck, it's fucking hot, crank the fans a smidge, and, <laughs> into, hey, let's check out what's on TikTok. The sentence instructions become output signals. The output signals then go to the other components of the computer, such as the monitor, graphics card, second monitor for background noise, headphones, third monitor for biblical scriptures, or wheels you attach to the side of the case so you could ride it through the airport. Those are the most common computer accessories. But if you happen to have something weird and impractical like a printer, it would apply to that as well. Computer technology is nearly doubling in speed every two years, which means in about 20 years, your phone will probably be your new car, and your gaming desktop computer will be your new wife. Scientists estimate that the world's smartest computer could potentially perform calculations from Algebra 2 textbooks, which everyone knows is impossible. 